Hello, my name is Jillian Brassel. I'll be your guide throughout your artistic swimming experience. You'll be very close to the swimmers, so please mind your head. Also, remember to breathe during this video. You will not only be underwater for extended periods of time, but you will also experience moments that might simply take your breath away. Artistic swimming, formerly known as synchronized swimming, is an aquatic sport which combines elements of dance, gymnastics, and speed swimming. A typical Olympic team is composed of eight swimmers who synchronize their movements with each other and to music. The sport is known above water for its beauty and creativity more than for its strength and athleticism, but underwater, it's a whole different story. The goal is to swim as close to each other in a pattern as possible while moving quickly and powerfully. The more pattern changes and moves the swimmers perform in sync, the higher the score. Look how close these swimmers are to each other. One misplaced arm can cause utter chaos and lead to injury. That's me in the black suit with the white cap counting down. I've had some first-hand experience myself with an injury from artistic swimming. In 2013, I was landed on by a teammate who was performing a backflip off of my shoulders. Although I don't really remember what happened immediately after she came down on my head, I do remember spending the next month sleeping nearly 18 hours a day in a darkened room. I had a concussion. Within a month, two more of my teammates were concussed. That's why I wasn't surprised to learn that at least one quarter of artistic swimmers will sustain a concussion throughout their careers. Let's hear from my 2013 teammate, Karen Zatoa, who also sustained a concussion while training for the national team. I got injured my first summer on national team in 2013. I was in pattern, there were eight of us, and there was this move where you're supposed to jump back with force and the person behind me was also bringing up her knees and it hit the back of my head as I was jumping. In synchro, you're trained to never stop. So it was uncharacteristic of me to stop and step to the side. It felt different, kind of like I was still underwater. Now that we've seen some practice below the surface, let's check it out from above. Welcome to Walnut Creek, home of the Aquanuts. I trained here during high school. At this show, the average spectator might be enthralled with the glamour. The sport hasn't really been analyzed for its risk of concussions. From what most viewers see, the risks are invisible. Let's go underwater to see from the swimmer's vantage points. Underwater speakers help the swimmers listen to the music below the surface. During a competition, swimmers count for themselves, but during shows and practice, a coach might count over a microphone. Let's hear from two former elite Aquanuts who also sustained concussions. My name's Karina Boyle. I swam for the United States national team. We did a lift. We left the lift a little early to get up in time, and she came down on my head. My name is Maria Koroleva. In 2011, I was named to the 2012 Olympic duet. In December of 2011 was when I got my first concussion. My second concussion was in the fall of 2015, getting ready for the Rio 2016 Olympics. We were doing a lift and my duet partner came down and smacked my head. In a survey of over 400 artistic swimmers, one quarter of them reported having sustained a concussion. Another 15% said that they thought they did, 
meaning that one quarter estimate could really be closer to 40%. Yes, this sport is about beauty, creativity, and athleticism, but there are risks below the surface.